Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vibhash Kumar Vaid and today in this video we will discuss about the Norma Vizialis. You can see here this is a skull and when we uh, study from the bottom view of the skull, so this study is called Norma Vizialis and today in this video we only deal about the anterior and middle part of the Norma Vizialis because this Norma Vizialis is further divided into anterior part, middle part and posterior part. So let's see the anterior and middle part of the Norma Vizialis. You can see here this is the inferior view of the skull. So first we'll see the anterior part of the Norma Vizialis. Anterior part is anteriorly bounded by this arch shape structure. This is called alveolar arch which bear a socket for the root of the upper teeth. You can see here this this alveolar arch has a socket for the upper teeth. Then posteriorly this anterior part of normal vizalis is bounded by this free margin of the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. You can see here. Now you can see here this is the hard palate and anterior two third part of the hard palate is formed by the palatine process of the maxilla bone. This is the palatine process of the maxilla bone which form the anterior two third part of the hard palate. And you can see here this is the posterior one third part of the hard palate. And this posterior one third part of the hard palate is formed by the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Along with this you can see in between these bone here a suture and this suture articulate with this hard palate bones like in between the anterior two third part of this palatine process of maxilla here you can see a suture this suture is called the intermaxillary suture you can see here this suture is called intermaxillary suture and in between the horizontal plate of palatine bone you can see a, another suture and this suture is called interpalatine suture and in between the horizontal plate and this palatine process of maxilla bone you can see here a, another suture and this suture is called palatomaxillary suture you can see here this suture is called palatomaxillary suture then you can see here just anterior to this intermaxillary suture here you can see a foramen and this foramen is called incisive foramen and it is a deep fossa which is situated anterior in the mid plane to this suture and two incisive canal you can see here this is the right incisive canal here we have a left incisive canal and this two incisive canal right and left pierce the ball of the incisive foramen then on the each side you can see here another foramen and this foramen is called greater palatine foramen on the each side and this greater palatine foramen just situated behind the lateral part of the palatomaxillary suture you can see here this is the palatomaxillary suture and just behind the lateral part of the palatomaxillary suture you can see here the foramen and this foramen is called greater palatine foramen then just behind to this greater palatine foramen you can see here another foramen on the both side and this small foramen is called lesser palatine foramen two or three in number on the each side lie behind the greater palatine foramen and perforate the pyramidal process of the palatine bone here this process is called the pyramidal process of the palatine bone and this foramen which perforate over this pyramidal process of the palatine bone then you can see the posterior border of the heart palate this is the posterior border of the heart palate which is free and present the posterior nasal spine in between this posterior border here you can you can see a presenting point and this point is called 
posterior nasal spine in the median plane then the palatine crest is curved ridge you can see here this is over here you can see here a ridge this ridge is called palatine crest this ridge which begin from just posterior to this greater palatine foramen and it is runs medially this ridge is called palatine crest so this is the anterior part of the norma vizalis then after the anterior part we'll see the middle part of the norma vizalis so this median part which extend from this posterior border of the heart palate to the a transverse line passing through the anterior margin of the foramen magnum so this portion is called middle part of the norma vizalis so first in the middle part of the norma vizalis first we'll see the structure of the median area of the norma vizalis after the median area we'll see the lateral area of the norma vizalis so first see the median area of the middle part of the norma vizalis you can see here on the median area this is the posterior border of the bomer then the broad bar of the bone form the fusion of the posterior part of the body of the sphenoid bone you can see here this posterior border of the bomer bone which articulate with the body of the sphenoid bone this is the body of the sphenoid bone the bomer separates the two posterior nasal aperture along with this you can see this posterior border of the bomer which separate two nasal aperture right and left nasal aperture then you can see the superior border of the bomer this is the superior border of the bomer and this one is a inferior border of the bomer this superior border of the bomer which is split into two ala you can see here here the superior border which is split into right and left ala and this ala articulate with the rostrum of the sphenoid bone this is the rostrum of the sphenoid bone then the palatovaginal canal you can see here a small canal this canal is called palatovaginal canal and this palatovaginal canal is formed by the inferior surface of the vaginal process of the medial pterygoid plate you can see here this is the medial pterygoid plate and this is the vaginal process of the medial pterygoid plate and the inferior part of this vaginal process of medial pterygoid plate is marked by an anterior posterior groove which is converted into palatovaginal canal by the upper surface of the sphenoid process of the palatine bone and this canal open anteriorly into a posterior ball of the pterygo palatine fossa you can see here this canal which anteriorly open into wall of the pterygo palatine fossa then just medial to this pterygo palatine canal you can see here another small canal here this canal is called bomero vaginal canal and this bomero vaginal canal situated just medial to this palato vaginal canal this is the bomero vaginal canal and this bomero vaginal canal which is forms the lateral border of the each ala you can see here this is the ala of the superior border of the rostrum this is ala of the superior border of the rostrum and just lateral to this ala here you can see a canal is formed and this canal is called bomero vaginal canal then after this two canal you can see here this is the broad bar of the bone and this broad bar of the bone is marked in the median plane by a pharyngeal tubercle you can see here this tubercle is called pharyngeal tubercle and a little in front of the foramen magnum and this pharyngeal tubercle which situated just little above to the foramen magnum so this is the median area of the middle part of the norma vizalis now we'll see the lateral area of the middle part of the norma vizalis you can see and this lateral area shows the two part of the sphenoid bone like pterygoid process this is the pterygoid process and greater wing of the sphenoid bone this is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone also seen in the three part of the temporal bone this is a petrous part of temporal bone here you can see this is a squamous part of the temporal bone and this is the mastoid part of the temporal bone now first see the pterygoid process 
here this is the inferior part of the pterygoid process and this is the superior part of the pterygoid process so the pterygoid process project downward then form the junction of the greater wing of the sphenoid and the body of the sphenoid bone behind the third molar teeth you can see here this pterygoid process form a projection just behind to the third molar teeth and this pterygoid process which inferiorly divide into median and lateral pterygoid plate you can see here this one is called medial pterygoid plate and this one is called lateral pterygoid plate this is the lateral pterygoid plate these two pterygoid plates fuse anteriorly but are separate posteriorly via v shaped pterygoid fossa you can see here in between these two pterygoid plate here a fossa is visible and this fossa is called pterygoid fossa then the fused anterior border this one is a fused anterior border and fused anterior border of the two plates articulate medially with the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone this is the perpendicular plate of the palatine bones and these two uh, plates which separate laterally from the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla this is the maxilla and this surface is called the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla by a fissure you can see in between this process or plates and the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla here you can see a fissure and this fissure is called palato maxillary fissure then medial pterygoid plate you can see here this plate is called medial pterygoid plate and this medial pterygoid plate is directed backwards it has median and lateral surface this surface is called medial surface and this surface is called lateral surface of the medial pterygoid plate and a free posterior border and this border is called posterior border the upper end of the medial pterygoid plate you can see here this is the upper end of the medial pterygoid plate which enclose a triangular depressed area this area is a triangular depressed area which enclose the upper end of the medial pterygoid plate and this triangular fossa is called the scaphoid fossa this fossa is called scaphoid fossa and this fossa is called pterygoid fossa the inferior part has a projection you can see here uh, but in this specimen this projection is broken but exactly it is situated here and this projection is called pterygoid hamless pterygoid hamless is a projection of the inferior border of the medial pterygoid plate this is the medial pterygoid plate then the lateral pterygoid plate after the medial you can see here this is the lateral pterygoid plate and lateral pterygoid plate is uh, directed backward and laterally okay and it has medial surface this surface is called medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate and this surface is called lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate and also it has a posterior free border then the lateral surface forms the medial ball of the infratemporal fossa this is the infratemporal fossa and this lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate which form the medial surface of the infratemporal fossa and the lateral and medial surface which also gives a origin to the muscles the posterior border you can see here this posterior border which sometime has a projection at its middle and this projection is called pterygospinous process which project toward the spine of the sphenoid then we'll see the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid you can see here this is the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid which is is pentagonal in shape this this is pentagonal in shape and the anterior margin you can see here this this is the anterior margin of this infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid which forms the posterior border of the infraorbital fissure you can see here this is the infraorbital fissure and the posterior border of the infraorbital fissure is formed the anterior margin of this greater wing of the sphenoid bone and the anterior lateral margin this is the anterior lateral margin and this anterior lateral margin form the infraorbital crust you can see here a crust this crust is called infraorbital crust
then you can see here this is the posterior lateral margin and this posterior lateral margin articulate with the squamous part of the temporal bone this is the squamous part of the temporal bone which articulate this posterior lateral margin of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone then on the posterior medial margin this is the posterior medial margin and this posterior medial margin which articulate with the petrous part of the temporal bone this is the petrous part of the temporal bone which articulate with the posterior medial margin of this greater wing of the sphenoid bone then anterior medially here it continue with the pterygoid process and with the body of the sphenoid bone and posterior medially here this part is called posterior medial and this posterior medially point between the posterior lateral and posterior medial here you can see a spine this spine is called spine of the sphenoid bone along the posterior medial margin the surface is pierced by following foramen you can see here a foramen and these foramens are first is foramen oval this foramen is called foramen oval and this foramen oval is oval in shape and it is large and oval in shape it is situated posterior lateral to the upper end of the posterior border of the lateral pterygoid plate okay this is the lateral pterygoid plate and it is situated this foramen oval situated the posterior lateral part or this is the upper part of the lateral pterygoid plate and upper part of the lateral pterygoid plate then just behind to this foramen oval here you can see another foramen and this foramen is called foramen spinosum this one this one is called foramen spinosum it is a small and circular in shape it is situated posterior lateral to the foramen oval this foramen situated posterior lateral to the foramen oval and is limited posterior lateral by the spine of the sphenoid this is the spine of the sphenoid then sometime you can see here this is the foramen oval in between this foramen oval and this scaphoid fossa here sometime here the emissary scaphoidal foramen or foramen vesalius is situated between the foramen oval and scaphoid fossa internally it open between the foramen oval and the foramen rotundum this foramen is called foramen vesalius or emissary sphenoidal foramen at time there is a canaliculus innominatus here this canaliculus innominatus which is situated between the foramen oval and spinosum here this canaliculus this is called canaliculus innominatus and the spine of the this spine of the sphenoid may be sharply pointed or blunt then the sulcus tube this sulcus is called sulcus tube and this sulcus tube is a groove between the posterior medial margin this margin is called posterior medial margin and the petrous temporal bone this is the petrous temporal bone in between these two structure here you can see a sulcus and this sulcus is called sulcus tube and it is lodged a cartilaginous part of the auditory tube posteriorly the group lead to the bony part of the auditory tube you can see here this is the posterior part and this posterior part this groove which lead to the bony part of the auditory tube which lies within the petrous temporal bone here this this groove which lies in between this petrous temporal bone then the inferior part of the petrous temporal bone this surface is called inferior part of the petrous temporal bone and this inferior surface which is triangular in shape and with its apex is directed forward and medially this is the apex of the petrous temporal bone and this apex which directed forward and medially and it lies between the greater wing this is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone and the basi occiput this is the basi occiput of the sphenoid bone its apex is perforated by the upper end of the carotid canal and is separate from the sphenoid bone um, by the foramen lacerum you can see here this foramen is called foramen lacerum then the inferior surface is perforated by the lower end of the carotid canal posteriorly you can see here this canal is called carotid canal and this carotid canal runs forward medially within the petrous temporal bone 
you can see here this carotid canal which runs forward and medially within this bone foramen lacerum is short white you can see here this foramen is called foramen lacerum which is short white canal and 1 cm long its lower end is bounded posterior lateral by the apex of the petrous temporal bone this is the petrous posterior lateral aspect of the petrous temporal bone and by the medially by the basi occiput bone you can see here this is the basi occiput part of the sphenoid bone and anteriorly by the root of the pterygoid process and the greater being of the sphenoid bone then the tympanic part of the temporal bone this is the tympanic part of the temporal bone which is also called as tympanic plate and it is triangular in shape you can see here this is the uh, tympanic part of the temporal bone which is triangular in shape and curved plate which lies in the angle between the petrous squamous part its apex you can see here this is the apex of this tympanic part and its apex is directly medially over here and it lies close to the spine of the sphenoid bone here you can see this is the spine of the sphenoid bone and its base or lateral border this one is called base of lateral border it is curve free or rough then the anterior surface this surface is called anterior surface and this anterior surface which form the posterior wall of the mandibular fossa this is the mandibular fossa and this anterior surface form the posterior wall of the mandibular fossa in same manner you can see here this surface is called posterior surface of this tympanic part and this posterior surface is concave and form the anterior wall of the floor and lower part of the posterior wall of the bony external acoustic meatus you can see here this is the bony external acoustic meatus and here this is the upper border and this upper border is bounds the petrotympanic fissure and you can see here this is the lower border and this lower border is sharp and free medially it is passes along the anterior lateral margin of the lower end of the carotid canal you can see here this is the anterior lateral part or lower end of the carotid canal which related to the medial part of this tympanic plate and laterally you can see here this is the lateral part and laterally it is form the anterior lateral part of the seat of the styloid process this is the styloid process internally the tympanic plate is fused to the petrous temporal bone now the squamous part of the temporal bone this is the squamous part of the temporal bone and this squamous part of the temporal bone form the anterior part of the mandibular or articular fossa you can see here the anterior part forms the mandibular or articular fossa which articulate with the head of the mandible to form the temporomandibular joint here we have a articulation of the head of the mandible which form the temporomandibular joint then the articular tubercle here you can see this is this tubercle is called articular tubercle which is continuous with the anterior root of the zygoma here this root is called anterior root of the zygoma so this is all about the anterior and middle part of the norma basalis i hope all are you understood the topic thank you for watching